Australis for the 2024 season had a chance to create a Danish super team and make Australis the Danish powerhouse they used to be. And after announcing Jobby and Stavn as the new 4th and 5th player, I had to ask myself, did Australis achieve this Danish dream team? Or is it just Australis picking up some big names? Today I will break down all the 7 players that were involved to make this team work and then see if Australis picked the right combination of players or if maybe there were some better team options. Australis wasted away. Let's start with the players. There were 7 players involved in this team and I wanted to look into the stats of these players, role and more to understand how the team will work together. Blamef is regarded as one of the best players from Denmark in recent time. He might not have a massive trophy cabinet yet, but as a player he's an amazing resource for Astralis, a top tier IGL and lurker. And in Astralis, he was the hard carry together with the Vice. But as a lurker you need to understand how the enemy team set up, rotate, tendency and more. And as an IGL you will know all of this, so why don't more IGL play the lurker role? Well, when the IGL is a lurker, they can't get much info with the team and rather need to rely on statistics, demo reviews and what the rest of the team sees. Which is why so many IGLs rather would be the AWP or entry, since this will gather you more information to make the correct call. So let's see how he uses his authority as an IGL and his playstyle as a lurker to the advantage of the team. The run starts normal with Astralis using 3 players towards middle. The goal in the 3-2 setup is to make sure that the CT will think that the T players might be in middle, with utility and sometimes even a peak. But the main goal is to make sure the CTs in middle will stay, and Astralis does this by using quite a lot of utility. Their nade stack worked and Astralis has gotten the opening kill and walks away. This is when the IGL and lurker Blamef comes alive. Here we see him dropping the bomb and asking his team to do a B execute, while he lurks in middle and he has one player in A main to fake it. And this is the dream for any lurkers. You stay middle, make sure that the A player can give you an accurate clue of how many players are still on A site, and you can just sit middle and kill off rotations. But, but after the shotgun is shown, Astralis falls back since a shotgun can do a lot of damage and win a whole round. So here the lurking blame F activates again, when all of the utility is gone, and we hit the minute mark on the timer. Blame F wants to take more control in middle, Something you as a lurker might have to do, since this will be much needed info for your team who was trying to take B. Here comes a late peak from oh, timing. Oh, turns oh, away. That and as the IGL, you need to get something here to make the correct call, try to fall off and go A or stick to the plan and go B. And here Blamef does an amazing job, peeking out, finding one kill and this will ensure his team that they can go B, while he do not overpeak, understanding that his position right now in bottom of mid is to hold of rotation and info are more important than if he would have run in middle and died, and Astralis takes the round. Round 16 is a round that shows how good Blamef can be in the classic lurking role. This one starts with Blamef using this nade to break the bottom mid smoke from the CTs for his teammate, and many when lurking will lurk right away and leave their team, but that's not the goal of the role. The goal is to lurk when needed. And we can see here in the start Blamef has one player in middle with him and he is playing more of a supportive role. And here a great play. When Astralis uses two nades to break the smoke, the first is thrown as a fake, while on the second break they will move out and take middle. And here the Vice finds the first kill. Right now Astralis are able to take full mid control. And we can see that the CTs has gone for a gamble stack on B site. And in these rounds the lurker shines, since he not only gets behind the CTs and get a kill or two, but gets information for his team before Astralis needs to pick a side to take. Blamef gets left alone in middle and here he just stays and waits, since you do not want to go too soon and die, nor be too late and be left alone to clutch. Now that trade might come in the form of Blamef. Yeah, this is Blamef at his best as well. They've, they've kind of shifted around him and let him get oh, great no. map control, but uh, I mean, if Dice committed to this? When lurking, you walk a fine line between these two options. As soon as this game gets down to 3v4, Blamef activates. This is to try to equalize the position with information or kills. And he needs to do this to make sure Astralis has a shot at winning the round. When Blamef gets here, he is asking for Astralis to take A site rather, since he will be able to kill off rotations from CT and middle. A great way of using his authority as an IGL. And a 3v4 is won due to Blamef catching rotations and calling for the team to rotate. Let's talk about round 14 and maybe why he does a bad job at both IGLing and lurking. Early on Astralis are two players in middle and here their goal is to just win middle control. So Blamef will start by being the entry in middle and as soon as he has gotten the mid control he needs to make the correct calls, he will stay in middle and pick a good timing to when to walk out. But here it goes wrong. Early on Blamef has a mech 10 so he wants to get up close and personal with the CTs, but he's rushing it. 
and a massive mistake by the lurkers are to rush to action. And here when Astralis gets middle with no issue, Blamef is fast up to red room, trying to catch a timing and listening for steps outside of the smoke. The mid player flashes for him like this, and he walks in on this. And it's kind of dumb. A flash here is good, to make sure no one is in any corners of the red room that will kill you, but it gives away his amazing position to have in the after plant, since Astralis will soon walk out on B site and take it. But instead of waiting for this, he wants to get all the information first, as many IGLs want. But this position of him, just keeping mid control, can allow him to apply pressure without peeking, since here, the CTs have to worry about middle and worry about flanks. BlameF decides to rather get the information fast, and here he overpeeks into 3 players from Lynn, who are ready since a new mid had been taken and the flash gave away the play from Astralis. But here he can only find a 1 for 1 trade, but giving Pistol a mech 10 is not ideal. Device is the opera of the team, and for many the greatest opera to ever touch CSGO, with 4 majors won and 2 major MVPs collected, and has had one of the most accomplished careers in CSGO. And as an opera, there are some key moments to look at, like how Device plays around rotation, takes control of the game and more. Let's break down some rounds from Device on the op. It's the first time Device has to op out, so let's see how he plays as the opera. Just to break down his playstyle, what he does well and maybe what he does not do so well. With a good spawn, he starts the round by dropping into connector and finding the first kill. This is a margin kill, meaning with a worse spawn, he would never be able to get this kill. And I love how he just falls back right away. As the T side, to find the first opening kill is important and can win the round in itself. So for him, there is no point in staying or pushing connector. Here, we are early seeing a lack of coordination by this Astralis version of the team. When the Vice finds the first kill, he turns and jumps into his teammate in the open. So if Heroic had one more player here, he could have been traded. And when he walks to middle to fight the Heroic player, he crashes into another teammate. Not ideal. But the Vice is quite passive, and why not? Astralis has the man advantage. So he do not need to try to find more kills, and rather position himself to make sure he will be able to kill any Heroic player trying to trade him. But as the AWP as well, and something we will see the Vice do later, is that he can play some defenses as well with the man advantage, as the AWP is good to hold of crucial spots where Heroic wants to push to win back the kill, now that Astralis has the man advantage. As an opera, you need to know when to not aggress and vice versa. It's important and Device is a master at this. Look how carefully he is taking playground, jump spotting and making sure it's cleared. And here we are seeing some utility and it's a good lesson. A lot of tier 2 opers are still playing like Kenny S from 2015, trying to solo carry the round while the best opers today has understood that the op is more to unlock your teammates rather than you to carry the game, and why so many of the best opers are masters with utility. This whole round, Device has been close to the bomb, never wandered off solo, and made sure he puts his time and effort where it's needed, and that is to get the bomb to a set site. When going out, Device is the last player to enter site, and here when his whole team gets mowed down, he activates. Knowing it's a 2v2, he needs to do something, and makes a lot of sound to force his side player to focus him and Borup, and Astralis can find his kill and make it into a 2v1, and it's just a cleanup by Device after that. Let's hop right into this round. The round started with Device trying to be aggressive in middle, but this had no impact. After he got smoked off and the nade failed to break the smoke. And Astralis was struggling and not able to trade, so with 25 seconds left, they make the run for B site. And here with low utility, they will split up and leave the AWPer solo short, but why? Short is easier to clear, easy to set up 1v1 fights rather than monster, and here Device will use this to help his two teammates coming monster, by clearing barrels, short, and holding water. And after the players in monster are able to get out, Device swings for Fiedi when he knows Heroic will focus the monster players, and here finds one player swinging for the monster kill. Then he gets the trade in water, and now all he need is to play safe, and hold off short on graffiti. Sadly we see Device over peaking trying to give Astralis a man advantage, but dies to a well timed peak in heaven. Some over aggression in the end, but he did a great job either way, finding two crucial kills of the round. Stare is the second entry of Astralis. In this role there are many things to master, but has Stare at the young age of 19 mastered this already? Well, going into his new lineup, he will be fighting for this role versus Stavn. So how good is Stare or will he maybe have to take a different role for the team be a part of the squad with the new signings? Let's start with the pistol round, and here we can see how different Stair plays as the second entry, where he will be the first out middle to peek out, but it's only after the two bottom mid players start to rush towards Con. So it's kind of a split way to do the second entry, like he is the first to peek top middle, but it's only after the bottom middle players make the entry and like show themselves first. 
Since this allows the player to take con, while the window player need to make a call to either focus the top mid players or con players, and this is the beauty of this. Couple players now through the underpass. It's Torsi that gets caught first. Borup opens up. And Star fighting middle has got some help with him through the underpass too. Mouse have not given a further opportunity, but as soon as they do, oh. as soon as they peek, it's an instant double. Where Stair then walking into con becomes a second enter properly. When he now can focus on trading his two teammates, he went into con right before him. So it's a great way of Astralis to make sure Stair can shine in his role. And Stair's one kill from window and the enter from Astralis has given him quite a good round. Stair in his role has a lot of entry fragger tendency, like how in round 14 from short he will be the guy entering short but alone. And here he takes top middle alone, uses some utility and this is not since he's an entry, but rather as I have talked about, he only plays his role as the second entry when Astralis needs to take side control. So with him in top middle, why not entry and try to open up short and get some information. He uses this Molotov that was meant to land deeper but hit the edge to make sure no players can push him from short while he is then clearing out ladder and window deep. And here he finds the first kill of the round. Stair up in the ladder room. Should be nice and easy for Stair to get this pick on Torzy. And then awaits his teammate for the side take. And here he gets Blame F with the mech 10 to take some attention away before he swings on the information Blame F can get to him to try to get a kill before falling off. I'm a big fan of how Stair will sometimes let his spawn be ruined to make sure he is the second player out. Like in this round, he starts by taking top middle with a flash and peeks out, before then running back. And now he will just chill top middle, use some utility, but waits for his teammate to peek mid first so he can play behind him and rather trade. And then when walking up catwalk, he will clear ladder and make sure he is the second player to take sight and create space. This might look dumb, but many teams has a reason for players to stick so much to the role, since some players are just better in set roles. And for set strats, this makes sense. But it could be a problem now that the second entry role might not be his anymore. Before we go over to the new pickups by Astralis, I have made a Discord server where we will try to make it the best Discord server for anyone wanting to improve in CS2. Stavn has over the last few years been seen as Denmark's greatest rising young talent, with making it into a major grand final, won many big events and more, and as a player, he's a very complete player in the roles he can do. Stavn was the second entry for Heroic, in this role as Stavn showed in Heroic, you need to be a master at trading, understanding how to take sight and what to clear with your entry. And many call Stavn a hard carry, since in this role you will shine, since the entry gets information and all you need to do is to trade. It's a fun role to play for stats, but if that was the only reason, Astralis would not pay so much money for Stavn, so how good is he in this role? So how good is he in this role? Stavn starts with Yabby and Apps, where Yabby will take first contact with the utility, while Stavn with the AK will make sure he can trade his teammate. And in these rounds where you are trusted the hero AK, you need to do a Stavn and being the second entry, so you can bait the deagle and clean up after him. When trying to go out on short, a flash and a smoke stops Heroic, and here they need to fall back, since Stavn solo can't take sight. And Heroic falls back, but only to fake it, and then walks back to top middle. And here is a masterclass from Stavn and why he is so good in this role. He makes sure the two players in front of him clears most, while he holds the most obvious angle that they will be peeked from. And here he finds the first kill and rather quickly finds a trade. And just like that, the AK has gotten two kills and opened up a site for Heroic. All because he could be the second and third guy out and just trade and click heads. And this might look easy, but you need lightning fast reactions for these trades, perfect cross replacement and a deep understanding of how to play versus the team you meet and the decision making of the CTs. This round starts with Stavn just staying back, trying to find any CTs over peaking, but after not getting anything, he will walk back to be ready in the execute. And like most roles, you do not need to do it 24 7, but rather when it's needed. And here he uses this flash to help his teammate taking short, and then focuses long, since he might be solo here. It still works as the second entry, since the player long will be forced to peek long after Heroic starts to execute on short, so he will still in some way be the second entry. And here after firing this kill on long, and Heroic taking sight, he will smoke long and just chill out while his teammate cleans up the round. Stavn, just like many other top tier players, can do so much more than his role. And here again we are seeing Stavn entry where Heroic will go for a B split. And here Stavn is the first player to walk long. And if he wanted to second entry the round, 
could have let a player walk in front of him, but he has chosen to do this himself and entry. And here we are seeing how he clears out long. First arch, then Kirby, a perfect way to clear it, since library is smoked. Taking arch only clears the right side towards library, since his second entry will clear the left corner. In one way or another, an entry and the second entry are very similar roles, due to that both will clear opposite corners, but the second entry will always need to trade. And great awareness from Stun, he clears the CT spawn and here finds one kill and an assist, but he does not stop there, the time is low, he need to make more room. And here some lackluster clearing of backside, top yellow and boost. Seems like he just wanted to look there, before widening church and dying. But a great way of seeing how versatile Stun can be. Yobby before Heroic was this new up and coming Danish talent after Copenhagen Flames amazing major run that put his name on the map. And in Heroic he had more of the lurker role. So going into Astralis, is he a better lurker than Blame F? Stats wise, I would say no. But Blame F has the advantage of being the IGL, so he can lurk for himself and make sure he sets himself up for kills, while Yobby do not have this option. So how does he lurk and makes the best of it? This game is from CSGO, keep that in mind. Let's start with the pistol round, and a great way of seeing how you can lurk when you do not have a lot of authority. Here Yobby starts solo in ramp, since Heroic are going for a 2-3 A split. With 3 players in middle, Yobby solo ramp and one more player in solo apps. The goal here is all about timing, Yobby plays up here to hold in this off angle for any players peeking into ramp. When the execute happens, since the cities need to win back some map control. And quickly it all goes wrong, and we are seeing Heroic finding only one kill while Navi finds two. This is when you as the lurker might have to do something to try to get an unsuspecting CT or even rotate back to help your mid teammates, but Yobby stays and does not move. Well, the call is to continue the split, so you have no need to move at all. And great from Yobby to show that he can stay still. Something we saw Blame F being afraid of in the demo sometimes we looked at. And here he walks back to drop down silent to make sure Navi is not expecting him. And I love how carefully he clears everything. No one will be able to get a free kill onto him. And when you are solo and lurking you need to clear everything. Since no one can trade you. Yobby is in 1v4 and can't do much. And is found. Still a great showing from Yobby of how he understands the fundamentals of the lurker role. Something we have seen in this game is that Yobby can do so much more than lurking. And this might be why Astralis picked him. In many of these rounds he will be the second entry or third, taking sight and rather defaulting to lurking when it comes to holding, by staying apps and palace, holding solo and behind for a player. But we will focus on his entry ability. But it's good to be versatile, just like Yobby is. And in this round it's perfect example of how. He starts in apps by going first and kind of defaulting to lurking while he have two teammates behind holding underpass and making sure to walk so the short player can't hear them. And I love how Yobby goes from this super safe lurk playstyle to then switching onto a more aggressive entry style when his apps teammate meets up with him. And just like that he is now the entry, finding the first kill on car and then one more kill while dropping down from balcony, a great showing to how much he can do and how he is not locked to the lurker role. In round 20, Yobby is back to the default lurking position by going solo palace, while his teammates are going mid and B apps. And here again, he finds this amazing off angle in hope of a Navi player over peeking him, while he is safe and is close enough to sight to hear rotations and more. Since this is crucial information as the lurker need to know before making his move. As soon as Heroic has mid and they're going up con, Yobby activates and here again he is clearing everything to make sure he's not seen by any CT players that he is not aware of, and allows him to be slower than to peek off the contact that his teammate makes on sight, rather than him making contact first. Sadly Heroic needs to push out of a smoke and here they fail massively and Yobby can't have much impact, but this was not his fault but rather his teammates taking too long to get out of con and clearing sight. Burp used to be in the support role of Astralis. Support role is known as a shitty role since most of the time you need to play the worst CT position, have to be very flexible and rather set up your teammate for success than yourself. I wanted to see how he did in this role to maybe understand why Astralis did not want him anymore in the role and why his replacement might have been better. Classic support role, buying one flash, one smoke and a P250 to a teammate who wants to get some kills, while Borup needs to run out onto site with no armor, a classic way of how support has to play in the pistol. And this is the classic support round. 
As a support, you can do great, but only if your other teammates can do their job. And here we see the Vice die early in middle, as well as the entry and second entry get slowed down. Then you as a support with no armor need to just walk out and that's a death sentence. And here, after he flashes, he walks out and meets met by a crisp blunt tap and is out of the round. Yes we do, they're very happy to be here. Hampus gonna take the fight to them. Head trick, tap, stare down. This is going perfectly. Oh, it's an ace. Head trick. This is coming up. Borup is not allowed to have fun. I feel like this round shows us. Here he starts the round with a nade in middle, but as soon as Astralis has two other players, he gets the bomb and is told to leave. He can't do anything in middle and rather need to walk behind the two B players. Not much fun, but it's needed. Since he has the bomb, he can't solo push middle and lose it. As well as three players in mid can sometimes be too much. But now we need to go back and drop a smoke to blame F, so the mid players can get some kills with the smoke, while he can't participate. Like, I'm being sarcastic, but this is the life of the support player. You will be bossed around and told what to do. And if you are up for that, you can shine in this role, since you are one of the last to get out on sight. But that means as well most kills will be gone or in the pistol, where you are one of the last to go into a site that is a death trap. Boru boosts a teammate up before helping his player in cave, and here they will take it. So the cave player will try to entry, while two Astralis players will run up ramp, and Borup just needs to make sure he can trade the cave player if needed. But they get smoked off and Astralis decides to rotate, and here he will again be the third player out on sight, but here he makes a crucial mistake. Since he planted, all the good post-plant positions are taken, and he gets stuck in the middle of the site with no covers to hold for the retake attempt from NIP. He is able to go to Donut, but with three players in Donut, it's useless. And here I think he needed to just stay on the site and take the fight, to maybe make the round more winnable. Since Nip used mostly smokes to keep Astralis away, meaning they can just molt of Astralis out of Donut, and Nip takes the round. One molly no smoke here for Donut. The triple Donut play could potentially work. Oh, it's AK's up. The one flash goes in, Molotov's gonna try to prevent the peak. Round 4 shows us a different bow rep. Here he is able to walk out on A side and become the lurker in this round. And here with a tech 9 and this amazing opening he has found, he needs to shine. And in the last few rounds as the support, it felt like he were not able to make any tough calls. Like when he was stuck on site, he should have taken the fight rather than going donut. But now as the lurker he starts making the calls. Since A was open, he rather asked Astralis to still go B, so he can shine and boy does he play it perfect. He like many lurker, waits for his opportunity, and that is when Astralis are going for the B take. And here he clears everything and is able to find 3 kills from behind. A great way to use your authority as a lurker, and a great understanding for Bora. And if any teams wants to pick you up, experience with him in the lurker role, rather than a support. But in this demo, we can see Borup as most supports will never have amazing stats. But seeing how the new Astralis line would be, Borup will not be able to compare to whoever on Astralis might take the support role. And sadly, why he would not have been able to keep his spot in the team. Before anything gets going, Borup, he's gonna find them not watching. He's gonna go ahead and tap back head trick. That's gonna turn the CT. Config still just going into the site for him. Oh. Off the tech nine, three with the sidearm. And Rez is gonna need a triple of his own. I think Bus came as a shock to the CS world when he was let go from Astralis to make room for Stavn and Yabby, since most thought of the Astralis core to be Device, Blame F and Bus, and not Steer, since Bus came from the academy team of Astralis and improved a lot during his short stint with Org. Bus used to be the entry of Astralis, and is his replacement better? Well, let's see how Bus plays as the entry, since in this role you need to do so much for your team for such a small reward. And I made a full guide on how to play as an entry, so check it out. But how do Buzz do in this role? Going into this round, Astralis has a full buy, since they got the plant. And this gives you a real chance of winning the second round. And this is key, so how will Buzz help here? Well, as the entry, your job is to create space and to take sight. So in the meantime, he will play in Monster trying to find one kill or some info, before Astralis decides of where they wanting him to go. And after he gets smoked off, he walks into shore and as the entry, with one more player to trade him if needed. But Astralis in the end decides to go A, and here they walk up through connector, and here we can see the team play that Buzz have and the player ahead of him. 
they will clear opposite side of Khan, balloons and toilet to make sure it's clear and here we can see his lightning fast reaction when Borup is killed. And now Buzz needs to be the sole entry to make sure he can create the space for his team. Here he takes the toilet route, while the other Astralis player takes the banana route. And here my biggest issue is this, he is not close enough to the banana player to be able to trade him on site fast enough and this is a lack in spacing on his side. But they are lucky the site is cleared. But I like how he does not overpeak it and rather stays on site to hold so Blamef can plant. This one shows how Buzz will entry as the first player. So let's start from when the action happens. Around a minute mark on the timer, Astral is ready to go out on site, and Borup dies solo. And this type of death kickstarts the attack by Astralis. Buzz starts by joining his team going out from toilet, but here after they can't find any kills, this stops the push momentarily, while the device is able to find a trade. And now Buzz needs to do the entry as he is the closest to sight. And he needs to do some of the worst entry scenarios going through a smoke. And he does a great job. On the flash, Buzz pre-fires the corner and luckily the flash is good so the truck player can't just kill Buzz and here Buzz finds a great kill after pre-firing the corner. But that is the danger. If this player is not blinded because he played anti-flash or the flash missed, Buzz is a free kill in the end since Buzz needed to guess when going out of the smoke where the CTs would play from. To device. Another kill for the offer of Astralis, and now it's all on Madden, blinded, but oh. so is Buzz, who wins out the fight regardless, and for Snappy... Is the new Astralis perfect? Right now, Astralis are barely in the top 20, quite a low point of an org that used to be in the top 2 and top 1 for years. But time has changed, and so did Astralis. And with the new team, I wanted to ask myself if Astralis picked the correct players, since both Yabby and Savn made the top 20 this year, while Buzz and Borup did not. So clearly, in the firepower department, it's an upgrade. If I were to look at the 5 players that were picked by Astralis, I would assume their roles would be this. Blame Math as the ideal and lurker, since he is the best player on the team. You will have to keep the vice as the op, since Stavn himself is a great oper, but he is not better than the vice. Then you keep Steer and Stavn as the entry team, since both have been second entries, and that are similar roles, so why not? And you let Yabi be more of a support or the second lurker. But just in this team we are seeing some role clashes, with Yabby and Blamef for the lurking role, Stavd and Stare for the second entry role, and that's not ideal. But as I said, with the heroic players, we saw some glimpse of them being able to do other roles if needed. But looking over the roles and position, I started to ask myself some question. Why Astralis made some of these roster choices? Like why keep Stare when Astralis needs a dedicated entry, since they had Buzz who did improve a lot in this role and had the main role as the entry, the only role Astralis right now is missing in the team. While I wanted to look over the combination that might have been better for Astralis. Buzz is a great entry with his stats, so how could Astralis fit him in this team instead? Well, by going for the team with Blamef as the lurker and IGL, Device as the Oper, Yabby as the support slash rifler and Stavn as the second entry, while Buzz is the entry. This in my head is the team that makes the most sense from all the 7 players Astralis had. But we can go even deeper here, role wise it would have been better for the team, more players got the role they liked the best on the T side. As well as when it comes to positions on some maps it would have been better. On Inferno, Buzz would have been the main short player, only role none of the Astralis players usually plays. Sometimes Stavn did but not often, and I think a team like this could have succeeded. But we need to remember that Stare has proven he has a bigger skill ceiling than any of the other players like Buzz and Borup, and Astralis might be gambling on this, and hopefully it pays off. So let's look over to Borup and how he could have made this team, or any type of Astralis team. Well, while we were going over his demo and role as the support, I saw him as the lurker might make more sense. And let's be honest, Blamef is a great IGL and lurker, but let's do some switches in Astralis to fit Borup in. Let's start with Bora, and he will be in the role of lurking. Then Blame F will be IGLing an entry, let Device keep his role as the upper, make Stum the second entry, and Yobby as a supportive second lurker type of player. And when it comes to clashes on the CT side, there are some like B side Inferno, Astralis would now have 3 players in these positions, but this might as well work as a team. I think the last option for Astralis with the 5 players we have not mentioned yet might have been the best version and it will be with the 5 players Astralis today has signed and are playing with. But this secret version will have devices to op, Stamina as a second entry, and Stare as the support. So what happens to Yabby and Blame F? They are the last clashing players right now when it comes to roles. We'll make Yabby the lurker, since having a lurker and IGL is not too ideal, with how hard it is to get information, and rather keep Blame F as an entry. This is the best version of the team in my books, 
Yubby in the top 20 were even placed higher than Blame F, S and Lurker. Yubby and Stavn, who are top players this year, can keep the roles that they are world class in. Steer is just an upgraded support player to Bora, and the Vice stays with Op, and Blame F goes to an entry IGL that he has been very good at doing versus Eco rounds. So in the end, Astralis picked these 5 players here, and they've played some games together. And we have seen over some options that Astralis had, and let's try to understand where the team is lacking, since so far in CS2, the team is 0-2. And why on the stats I have showed the last 3 months, since that is all the CS2 experience these 5 players has together in the game so far. Astralis starts in a 1-3-1 setup, with the goal to win early mid control before making up where Furia will be. It's a good way to start the pistol, since mid is a spot that controls the game, so to win this is very important. While then having one player on each side to make sure they get the information of where Furia could go. Furia are going all 5 players towards A, in ramp and one in palace. And a play like this has to be fast, since Astralis are taking full map control. It will be hard to sell a fake. And it's why Furia as fast as possible starts to execute with two smokes towards jungle to cut out any Astralis players from sight and then a Molotov towards wood to make sure no players can hide there and a last Molotov towards triple to make sure no one can be on sight and hide. The first kills goes to Astralis with Yubby through the smoke finding the skill after Cello tried to spam. Not ideal since it's quite easy to see where the spam comes from. But Furia uses this to take CT control and plant the bomb. He's taking the silencer off, he's going in on caps, and that's Yabby with one straight through the smoke, Jello taken out. Only problem is that Furia are all four players stuck on sight, so a boxing attack will be very powerful. And that's what we get. A full boxing attack with Blame F in CT, and when he makes contact, the rest of Astralis will start to push sight. And this is done perfect. Blame F finds a kill, forcing Furia to focus him, while then the sight push cleans up the round and are gonna have to go in this and the patience of Blame F has paid off for a kill on Yuri. Even opportunities for follow-up kills, but Yabby's got those. Yabby's got everything. Blame F helps him, and that's the pistol. Astralis don't lose a single player. Have they got it for sure? Defuse though. Oh yeah. I don't think they do, think. <laughs> <laughs> All five players survive, they, they don't win the round. The Astralis are going for a 1-2-2 setup with one player on A holding from connector, two in middle and one in window, peeking with the op, and then one jumping out of the window with the best spawn, and then two on B site. But Furia are going four guys in middle and one in spawn to use utility and lurk a little bit. And this round starts with the vice jumping up here, since the op will hold down here. This allows you to get lagged and not killed so you can find the first kill. And the vice does this before he's traded, but it's a crucial kill for both sides. Furia uses this to take full mid control, while Astralis can fall back and opt to rather hold for any pushes from Furia. They're online, they post their first round, but they're not out of the woods just yet. We are gonna see a mid assault coming through. Device hits the first, but it's an instant reply from Yuri. Then a crucial fight takes place. Stair has used all of the stress in mid to push apps and TV room. And when he peeks, he finds Yuri, pressing Q, and stairs win this fight. A very crucial kill. And you can see how lucky this kill is from Stair. When pushing up, Furia has a player holding underground. So this was all about timing. Stairs for Stair to have pushed through the B apartment was exactly what he done, but he might get further than they anticipate. And Yuri's watching for that. He's ready for it. And Stair, he's about to get his head ripped off. Timing. Oh, it goes the other way. Trade it back rather fast with a 3v3. What will Furia do? Well, Furia does a split with one in TV room and one just going into apps. And then Art almost out of apps already. And here Art solo peeks out and dies. With no trades. But this was all a fake. It's towards a van. <laughs> he couldn't actually play trigger discipline there. As you can feel, I'm actually, yeah, I'm not dropping down here. Something's not right. Furry will use this death of Art to send Fallen to ramp and Cello running to ramp. In hope that Astralis rotates to B. And this has worked. Two Astralis players are going on B. While Blame F is solo CT. And here Furry peeks him. It's very bad spacing and Blame F shuts down the round. We coordinate as the first interaction comes through and Blame F makes light work of both of them. Furry are going one player in palace, three in middle and one player in apps. Again a very default setup with two lurkers trying to get some info and control. While the mid player's goal are to force Astralis to over rotate towards middle. So the lurker can find some more kills. Astralis going two players close to ramp, one in middle and two on B site. The goal here is for the close ramp players to get some early info in ramp of where Furry are. While Blame F has to follow from middle to give mid back to Furia after being molted off it. Furia uses a lot of utility taking bottom mid, but what do they do after? So far Astralis has given away middle and not peeked into Furia, and here they need to find an opening kill. 
and utility wise, Furia has used a lot of smoke and other stuff to take mid, so a side tick in a 5v5 will be much harder to pull off. Well, Furia walks out of the smoke from Con on a perfect timing. Has got some help from his teammates as they occupy connector. Not only that, but they look to leave already. They're pushing it up through the top spot. And the stairs device now calling. As soon as the vice stops to hold it. And this is the opening they needed. Not a kill, but a chance to walk out of the smoke as three players without anyone being able to kill them. And here the vice is able to get one kill after spotting one player and he finds a one for one trade. But since Astralis had the focus of ramp control, this leaves Yobby on Tetris alone to fend off area. Art finds there, but blame if he's able to get two kills. And the round is doable from Astralis. Yabby just needs to shine. Yabby finds one kill and shoots Art down to 50 HP. But this is not enough. And Art in the 1v2 manages to get Astralis into two 1v1 and here takes a round. And Stown. He's got that connector kill. That flame map gone. And now just one left. This could be Art's masterpiece as the timing on the peak is there. He's seen the info, he knows exactly where Stown is. It's all about tracking him behind the triple boxes and getting the right eye call. Oh! And that's exactly what Art has. Precision from the sniper, and the in-game leader has the clutch. My last video was about entry fragging, and this one shows you how powerful some entry kills can actually be. Astralis starts around with two players on A, one in mid, and two on B side. While Furry are going two players in ramp, one in B, and two in middle. So where is the entry? Well, Astralis A players are both going sight and using a nade and molotov to block out the ramp push. Or so they think. Here Keserato with a great spawn runs out of the flames to find two opening kills. And just like that, Astralis has lost the A sight. No traits or anything. With the same promo code, and we are going to see opening frag there. King Serato, considered to be one of Brazil's best, shows us what he's made of here. Beautiful double kill. As well as Cello finding Stavn on short, who after his teammate died, had to peek to get some info and maybe a kill. And we are 22 seconds into the round, and it's already a 5v2. But the Vice has gotten an amazing timing, and here can find two kills for Furia, since Furia did not expect the rotations to come so fast. But Blame F in the 1v3 can't do much, and Furia takes the round in a dominant fashion. Having brutal skill and aggression. Oh, but that's what Device is known for too. Snatching round back. But it looks at its darkest. Device on the double. Now it's on the stair and a 1v3. Now. Let's go over to the T side to see how Astralis are set up with the new lineup. Furia has taken control of this match with a score of 9 6. But on the T side, it's where Astralis will shine. Astralis starts by going for two players in top mid and three players towards apps, a very standard way of playing the T side. Since an A ramp or palace push from the CTs are very unlikely, while Furry are going for a 1 on A, 2 in mid and 2 on B setup. The most common setup I feel like on Mirage these days. Astralis smokes off short and window in hope to slow down any mid pairs from Furia, but Stair goes kitchen in apps to make sure no utility hits him. And here after the Molotov stops burning, Stair will try to find an opening kill from apps to allow Stavn, who by now have pushed up Catwalk to short, since now Furia will focus the app's player. So Stavn can try to push from short, and for this, Astralis has smoked off Con to allow Stavn to do this. Stavn finds a first kill in ladder room, great timing, but Dark can trade back. Six and eleven. I'd love a moment from him here, Astralis. Oh, Perhaps this would be it. Caserato pinned in the ladder room. Stavn will take that kill, but he gets chased down and traded by Art, who is just not stopping today. But this trade by Art has put both Furia players towards short, and here Astralis can clean them up, and makes the game to a 2v2. Blame F walking into jungle from window is able to catch the timing of fall, and Astralis has gotten the sight and around. Insane to see how hard it is to counter this. When Stavn takes short, you would think that that would be everyone that is behind. And you have Blame of just going into window and coming behind as well. Back into the fight, but he's got the help of Art. He has eventually been traded, and so will Art by Yabby. Remember Blame F's lurk, here he is. The bulldozer has taken down the kill at CT, that's- Furia starts the round with one on A, one in window, and two on short. Just to have full focus in middle, to make sure they can take mid control before then focusing sight. While well, Astralis is going for two players in apps, one in middle and one in spawn using utility, and then Yobby alone in ramp as the lurker. Device uses a fun flash to peek mid, and this allows him to actually peek mid and blind Furia. And here, Astralis window smoke leaves a gap, and Astralis abuses this with one player spamming the corner, while Device holds the corner and is able to spot fall, and a great shot deals with fall. Instantly, it's just like, now it's just, well, it's just back, it's just whatever. We might as well just put it I in. Guess it. Put it in. The idea was just that I think he fixed the inconsistent with the jump with the subtech, so that that's fine now. And, and apparently, like you just stand still, it's always going to be a jump fight. As well as Stavn full blinded finding art before Kesterado can trade back. Well, let's see the lurker in action. It's a four v three. So in this scenario, as the lurker, you can try to do something 
If you die, you will get crucial information, and a 3v3 is very winnable for the T side, with the info Yubby can get on A site. But Furry are ready with two players focusing ramp. Only problem is the way they are set up right now. So here Yubby can abuse this. Well, let's see. And Furry walks together, and the spacing is just a little bit off. And in Premiere, matchmaking and face it, this would not matter. But at the highest level, the spacing just loses Furry at the round on the spot, with Yubby finding two kills off the lurk, and A site is open. But Yabby won't be fumbling in the bag at all. He's got himself a double. Yuri and Kevzerado taken out in one foul swoop. And it's just Cello left. As far as I'm going for three players towards Palace, one in mid and one in apps. Since so far, Furia has been focused very much on middle. And this is done to counter that. By maybe trying to brute force their way into a weak A site. While Furia are going one in CT, one in con, and two in window. And one on B. A very mid focused setup. As far as a smoked off window and top middle. And here Art will jump over to Catwalk, but Sam finds this kill. This kill will signal for the Palace players to move out, since this kill will force a Furrier player to help middle, leaving A even worse, since now the Count player will only care about middle. Fall might have missed this call, as he is showing himself from Palace, only looking ramp, allowing Yobby to drop down woods and stare to find his kill onto Fall. Yobby finds one kill towards stairs, and just like that, Astralis has gotten a sight and a 5v2, and will take match point. Yabby. He's moved into the palace, man. He's like the king right now on the server. He's just stopping everybody. And stairs with him. Fallen's gone. Spam down through nice the ticket box. His ticket punched. And Yabby comes forward. Rips Yuri off the stairway. In the end, Australis did not play any set roles of the trio of Yabby, Stavl, and Stair. Since the heroic players in our breakdown has shown to be able to do so much more than just one role. And I think this is why Australis wanted them. Now they have Yabby and Blamef that can lurk. Stavl and Stair can both be entry and second entry and more. Well, this was a fun project to do and took way too long. Hopefully you learned something about team building, understanding team composition, problems you can get and more. Thanks to my fellow creator Vasu, he helped me with the script going over it and helped me with some details and stuff. Check him out, he makes amazing content. And hopefully Borup and Buzz can find some new teams to be mainstays in. Thank you all for watching.